welcome back to my channel. About two months ago I asked on my Facebook page, which is linked down below, shameless plug, if you prefer seeing chatty makeup videos or kind of ones where I do voice... Oh, I don't like the way this is positioned. I've changed my room around so you're gonna have to bear with me while I figure out the, the settings. But basically I asked people if they wanted to see chatty ones or voiceover -y, more professional ones and it was almost unanimous, it actually was unanimous I think, that everyone wants to see chatty videos. So that's what I'm here to do today for you. As you can see my skin is a little bit shitty, I'm still recovering from the flu, I've still got a cough and I'm still a little bit nasally so you're just going to have to put up with that I'm afraid. And today I'm going to recreate a look I did yesterday on my Snapchat and people were like please do a tutorial on that look. So I'm going to chat while showing you how I achieved that look. So I'm going to start off with priming my face because I need it to last. I'm using the Scandinavia Makeup Primer Spray. To be honest this isn't essential, I'm just trying to use it up to be honest. And I fan it off because I'm too lazy to wait for it to dry. Then I'm going in with like a regular primer and this is the Bare Minerals Prime Time Foundation Base. This is nothing special to be perfectly honest but again trying to use up all the crap I have in my drawers. It's just a silicone based primer like the Smashbox one. Or even if you live in America, the Monistat Chafing Relief Gel. Yes, Chafing Relief. This is actually an amazing primer. That light went yesterday and then an hour later came back which was weird. And I always make sure when it's a silicone based primer to put a little bit under my eyes just to kind of fill in those little fine lines. For foundation, oh my god I love this foundation so much and every time I wear it people are like what foundation are you wearing? It looks amazing. Nara's Sheer Glow. I use the colour Punjab which is probably like three quarters of a shade too dark for me right now so I am going to put a little bit of a lighter foundation. This is the Catrice Even Skin Tone in colour Even Ivory. I'm gonna pop like a tiny bit of that in just to like lighten it down a bit so I don't look completely mismatched. The only thing is this doesn't come with a pump which is a bit crap because way too much comes out. It's like Morse code. Mm. Yeah, that's probably enough. My skin is so shit right now. Just a tiny bit of that. Ooh. Yeah so how has everyone been? I'm finally kind of getting back into the groove. After coming back from China, I won't, like, I don't really want to talk too much about China, but after coming home, it took me a while to get back into like normal life. Just taking my beloved beauty blender and just bouncing that into my skin. Yeah. Oh, actually, there's something I really want to talk to you about. I didn't want to snap about it because it would take literally like 30 snaps. Um, I posted on Instagram yesterday about the power and the lies of photo editing apps and like let's face it they're so easy to get now you can get them for like any phone you can do them on your computer it's so easy to edit photos now and make yourself look thinner more smooth and like I'm, I'm not pretending to be holier than thou I'm no stranger to throwing an owl filter on my photos and smoothing a little bit and you know taking out under eye wrinkles and stuff but I've decided from now on I'm not going to use any editing on my photos apart from like cropping and maybe putting a border around but I'm not going to use any smoothing or blurring like edits on my photos from now on because I feel like oh, you're lying to the people who are following you first of all um, but I feel like I feel like you guys are all really fucking smart and I feel like everyone can kind of see through it but as well as that it does nothing for your own self-esteem to see how amazing you can look with all these editings on your photo editings edits on your photo so I feel like for my own sanity I'm going to just post photos that aren't edited from now on so there and I'm thinking of doing the same thing for my snapchat too like not using the filters because Lord knows they can make you feel horrendous about yourself. Now my breakout isn't totally covered. So like put a little bit more on. No, I won't. I'm going to conceal now using the Bourjois Healthy Mix Concealer. I'm just gonna put this under my eyes and do a little bit of highlighting with it. 
again putting it onto my little palette and then taking the pointy end of the beauty blender and just bouncing that anywhere I need it. So yeah, from now on I'm not going to be using any editing on my photos. Not that I ever went too crazy with the editing anyway, like some people go... <sighs> but again, I feel like people can totally see through that. If you want to follow me on Instagram, feel free, the name will be along here. If not, that's okay. And if you want to follow me on Snapchat, the name will be here now. So basically, Snapchat has become such an addiction for me, both watching and snapping. If I'm not snapping, I'm doing more watching. Getting a lot of feedback. I remember I asked a few weeks ago, again on my Facebook, um, what snaps of yours are your, what snaps of mine are your favourites? And it was, again, almost unanimous, the ones where I'm annoying Ian. And I was really surprised by that. I thought people would be like, no, Laura, I want to see more beauty stuff. But people are really into the, like, annoying my boyfriend thing. Which is fine by me. I'm going to annoy him regardless. But I didn't know if it would start to annoy people on Snapchat. But no, people really get it. If you don't follow me on Snapchat, or you don't have Snapchat, basically, I don't ever show my boyfriend's face for personal reasons. His personal reasons, not mine. I'd show him all day, every day, if I could. But, um, like, ugh, we have so many lols. I literally say to Ian regularly, I wish we had a camera crew that could just be here and capture all these moments so I could share them with people. But, no camera crew. <laughs> I'm going to powder my skin down. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. I'm going to prime my eyelids now with the Bare Minerals 5-in-1 Primer. This is actually really good. I just pop it all over my eyelid like that. And again, back to my beauty blender, try and find a cleanish corner and just blend the primer in with that. I find it works so much better with the beauty blender than with a synthetic brush. And it keeps my eyeshadow looking flawless all day. Now I'm going to powder down my skin using the Catrice Pr Prime and Fine Mattifying Powder. <sighs> The lights are kind of contorted. Oh, there you go. Looks like this, and it's in the colour Translucent. Really, really nice powder. Um, a few people have been asking me if I'm going cruelty-free with my cosmetics, and yes, I am. However, I have a lot of stuff in my drawers that isn't cruelty-free, and I figure it's probably best to just use it up and get rid of it, that as opposed to just dumping it, because like you've already paid the money. What's the point in like wasting it? So I'm moving to cruelty free, sorry, I'm moving to cruelty free as much as I possibly can. But I am obviously still using my old products. If you are interested in more cruelty free videos, definitely let me know. What's really surprising for me is that, God I'm so chatty. What's really surprising for me is that there's a lot of really affordable brands that are cruelty free like Catrice and Essence. Wet n Wild, if you're in the States, Milani. Now I'm going to go in with a Scandinavia makeup setting spray. I tend to do this in layers, I find it works the best. So I'm going to spray now that I have my base on. And then I do my final spray when my makeup is completely finished. So now my skin looks quite a bit better, but I still need to reintroduce a bit of colour. So I'm using my favourite bronzer at the moment, it's the Tan Organic bronzing powder like like look <laughs> and I'm using the Sigma tapered face f25 brush I really like this for just banging on some bronzer onto the face and I literally just swirl it mostly in the brown try and get a little bit of the gold as well for the glow and I just like it's very subtle but I like the effect and then I take a little bit up onto the temples and onto the forehead just to make me look like I've had a little bit of sunshine. Fun fact, I don't really like sitting out in the sun so this is the only way I'll ever look like I've got some sun. If you'd like to purchase some Sigma brushes which to be honest are like legitimately my favourite brushes I'll leave a link down below in the description box. It's my affiliate link though so I make a tiny commission from if you do just 
if you do choose to buy any brushes using that link I make a tiny commission um, not sure how much it is, I think it's like 5% or something it doesn't cost you any extra but it shows Sigma that you've come from my link so I got a little bit of a little bit of a kickback but they are legitimately my favourite brushes I've had some of these for like seven years and they're still going strong for example I've had these for like five years and they're still going good yeah loads of my brushes are really really old it's kind of sinful I'm probably doing I'm probably doing all this in a funny order but it's just the way I do them it's just gonna take a spoolie and just gonna brush out my eyebrows I was actually in touch with Lorna yesterday Lorna Farrelly from The Brow Artist about getting a top up on my brows like they still look good like you can tell that they still look good and the shape is still good I just want them like a little bit darker so I'm gonna see about getting them tattooed on again so I'm taking charcoal brown from MAC it's just like a matte cool toned brown I'm just gonna run that around the edge of my eyebrows today is not going to be a very perfected look I wish I was into that whole sculpting out the brows with concealer thing but I'm just like get the makeup on and get out the damn door the difference brows make now I'm using uh, Brun by MAC which is just a much darker cool tone brown oh and the brush I'm using is just like a number seven eyebrow brush I'm just gonna run that through like the body of the brow just to just to add a little bit of dimension very lightly if I just had my hair coloured and it was much redder I'd pop some maroon eyeshadow through but it's after fading quite a bit now so I'm just sticking with the brown and then to set my brows I'm using the Essence Make Me Brow which is a total dupe or so I hear of the Benefit Gimme Brow I have never tried Gimme Brow I'm not well I was a fan of Benefit Cosmetics but I'm not anymore I don't support the company we won't go there and I find this just adds a little bit of plumpness to the brows and obviously sets them in place so it's kind of a multi-purpose product really like it now I'm going to do my eyeshadow okay this is a pretty unique eyeshadow I have no color like this and I've never seen a color like it it's from the company Kiko and it's in like a little thing it's not proper packaging that's the details I think it's the color 204 and it's in this like an amazing peach colour. I feel like this is what Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek is probably like. I don't know, I don't have Peach Smoothie. So I'm just taking this onto an Inglot 6SS blending brush. Wait till you see how gorgeous this is. Quite a lot of fallout, but... It's just an amazing, like, transition colour. The left side of my face just cooperates just much better on every level. My eyebrows, my mouth, my teeth, my nose. I'm actually going to pop an underbrow highlight on as well. And for that I'm going to use Floof by MAC. Which is quite stark but I think it looks really nice. So sorry about that. My card filled up which is um, delightful so next I'm going to take the colour camel from Bobbi Brown it's this amazing like look at that colour oh so good on a Delium Tools 776 brush it's the same as any of the like blending brushes that look like this like the 217 and that and I'm just gently taking some tapping off the excess and popping that sideways into the crease just to deepen it up but I'm concentrating the colour more like in one area as opposed to blending it way out see there that just kind of deepens the crease sometimes I like pull by the hairline just to tauten the skin because I'm getting old okay <laughs> another trick I use because as I said I'm getting older instead of blending down on the outer corner I kind of try and blend like where my eyebrow ends that's where I kind of try and keep the the colour focused above just to lift the eye as opposed to drag it down and then I just pop back to this blending brush and just gently blend again just to make sure it's all blended together and you can keep building that camel colour as much as you can till you have the desired depth I'm pretty happy with that there now next I'm going to take a MAC 
flat shader brush. This is a 239. Any flat shader brush will do. And I actually used an eyeshadow from a different palette yesterday, but I'm going to stick with MAC because, just because. And I'm going to go back to that like eyebrow highlight colour called Floof. Um, and I'm going to pop that carefully all over the lid. It's like a really light champagne-y pink colour. It's gorgeous. And I make sure to keep it just on the lid. But I'll go back in a second to blend. It's quite a multi-purpose product, this floof colour. When people ask me for a really good inner corner highlight, I always say floof. It's absolutely amazing. You'll see in a second the difference it makes. It's just so good. And then I go back in with my Inglot blender and just go like that so there's no harsh lines. Now I need a smaller detailer kind of brush. This is the Sigma Smudge Brush E21. It's a little travel size one. I'm taking that floof again. I'm just popping that carefully on the inner corner. Inner corner highlight makes such a difference. It just makes you look more awake. Oh, like I really miss it when I don't wear it. And now for the under eye, I'm going in with the Bobbi Brown colour. I can't remember if I used the Kiko colour yesterday, but this blends so effortlessly. It's an amazing product. And then I connect it on the outer corner with the crease colour. No, I don't know if I said, but if you've Mac interrupted, it's basically the exact same as this camel colour from Bobbi Brown. They're both like not cruelty free brands though, so. When I find a colour that matches this perfectly and is cruelty free, I'll rejoice and I'll be sure to let you know about it. Next, I'm going to take the brun colour that I used in my eyebrows on that same brush. These are so multi purpose, they're amazing. And I'm going to just stamp that on the outer corner Because the eye has been so warm so far, I kind of want to introduce a cooler brown on the outer corner. And then just little circles to blend it. And then just a tiny, tiny bit on the outer corner of the under eyes. I opted not to use liner yesterday. Instead, I got my Real Techniques brow brush, which is really, I think, too thick to use in the brows. It's too, um, it's too big to use in brows, in my opinion and I took a dark brown. So I'm just gonna take that brown color again, but it's gonna be much more concentrated when on this brush. I'm just gonna literally stamp it into the lash line. It gives like the illusion of a darker lash line. So you, like, you might have eyeliner on, but you might not. And in there just for a little bit of definition. It's a lot less pressure than eyeliner as well. I'm just going to curl my lashes and apply my mascara, which is going to be the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. I snapped about how much I'm in love with this mascara. It's so good. It can go a little bit clumpy sometimes, but it's so worth it. Okay, lashes are done. I just have to recurl them. I got a little bit of mascara up on my upper lid, but I'm gonna show you in a second how I start that out. So I have to wait for my mascara to completely dry before I recurl them. I'm going to use my blush now. Where's my blush brush? Oh, there it is. And I'm using NYX's Peach Blush. Well, actually, no, change my mind. I feel like I should probably go with a more warmer colour blush. So I'm going to use Espresso by NYX, which is more of like a bronzy blush colour as opposed to pink. And I'm using my Sigma, my travel size Sigma SS168. Yeah, I've had this for probably six years. And it's still going strong. And it's still my favourite blush brush like of all time. So I'm going to just put that on the apples of my cheeks and then just kind of brush it back. I don't want to have like a really dolly face. And then for highlight, my favorite highlighting brush is the Sigma F35 tapered highlighter. It's like the baby version of the guy I used for the bronzer. As you can see, they're like the exact same shape, just smaller. Love this for highlight. It's just, it just makes it so easy. And what highlighter am I going to use? I'm going to use the Hourglass ambient lighting palette and I always end up using the middle one as a highlight because I feel like these two don't really show up on my skin sorry um so I'm whoring through that but like just like are you ready this emoji 
I put a little bit down my nose, a little bit. And I know Wayne Goss said this is a massive no-no, but I really like the effect of a little bit of highlighter on the tip of my nose, just rubbed in with my finger. So glowy, love this palette. And it's cruelty free. So my lashes are starting to drop. I don't know if you can tell, like they were nice and curly, but now they're starting to drop again because they always do. For that little mascara mishap, all you do is wait for the mascara to dry and with a cotton bud, just literally flick it off the skin. And it's gone. Fixed. This is an eye pencil that is an absolute biatch to get a hold of. I think you can only get it in Mac Pro stores. I'm just gonna sharpen it. Costa Riche. It's a really gorgeous warm brown eyeliner. That makes such a difference to the eyes. It just really makes green eyes pop. Can you see the difference that eyeliner makes? It just makes such a difference. I'm gonna match them up now. A lot of people are cringing right now thinking I'm going to pull my eyelashes out. Uh, basically, I'd say if I've lost 20 eyelashes in my entire life by recurling my lashes, that is it. For lips, everyone was asking me about my lip colour yesterday. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. I first of all used Spice Lip Liner by MAC, um, obviously to line my lips. I try and make my bottom lip look a little bit smaller. And the lip colour I used yesterday, which everyone was raving about and saying really suited me, which I was delighted with, is the NYX Matte Lip Cream. And this is in the colour Abu Dhabi. And it looks kind of scary in the tube, but on the lips it looks really, really good. And it lasted really well for about five hours yesterday. When it got to the sixth hour, it was starting to look a bit crumbly. So I just fill in my lips using that. And then one final layer of the Makeup Finishing Spray from Scandinavia. If you liked this style of video, please let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section down below if you have any video requests and I'd be more than happy to do them. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!